dessert in your air fryer? Of course you can. Keep watching, I'm gonna show you four different desserts you can whip up together right in your air fryer. If you're new here, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kathy from fabulouslyfrugal.com and I'm all about teaching you how to be brave in the kitchen and do simple, easy meals in your air fryer or your Instant Pot. And if you're new to the air fryer or even if you've been using it for a little bit, be sure to check out my air fryer 101 video. I've got a link to that down in the description below. In there, I share all you need to know about the air fryer plus a few little hacks. Today I have four desserts for you that are easy to whip up, you don't have to turn on your oven, and they're a lot of fun to make too. And of course I'll have links to all of these recipes down below so you don't have to scribble down notes and try and keep up with me as I show you how to make these. You ready to see these dessert recipes? Let's go. Up first, air fryer chocolate chip cookies. The recipe itself is so good. And when you cook them up in the air fryer, you get a crispy exterior, gooey, chewy, yummy interior. There are a few things you need to know in order to do this successfully. So be sure to watch all of my tips and tricks. And here it is. Okay, to start, I've got four pro tips that you need to know before you start baking your air fryer chocolate chip cookies. Boop, I'm chocolatey. Number one, a lot of websites and blogs were recommending these air fryer parchment papers that have the cute little holes. What I found is that it just blew the paper, smooshed my cookies together, and I ended up with these really odd shape cookies, which, you know, whatever, if you're totally cool with that, they still taste fine, they just don't look as cute. So instead, what I found is I just use this cute homemade foil sling. I could use this more than once where the parchment paper you could only use once and then you would need to use another one. And also this is easier to pull out of the air fryer because I could make these cute little holders. So use the foil, it did not cause any problems with a burnt bottom for my cookies in my air fryer. Tip number two, you want to go uniform size. You could use a cookie scoop. I have found this one to be the perfect size. I've got a link for you below. You can also use your kitchen scale. For the recipe that I make, 39 grams is perfect amount of cookie dough for the perfect size cookies for your air fryer. Tip number three, let your cookies cool. You can leave them sitting in the air fryer for about five minutes and then lift them out and then set them on a cooling rack for about another five to 10 minutes and then they will just be so perfect. You don't have to worry about them falling apart. And lastly, tip number four, every air fryer is slightly different. I have the Philips XXL air fryer. Yours is gonna be a little bit different than mine. I recommend going a little bit lower on the bake time because you can easily add another minute or two so you'll find the perfect time that works with your air fryer. I have a few other golden nuggets as I whip up this particular batch of cookie dough. Check out this recipe. We've perfected it and it's ooh, so good. For this cookie dough, you need one egg at room temperature. I have a trick for that. Sugar, brown sugar, oatmeal, a stick of butter, softened. I also have a trick for that. All-purpose flour, lemon juice, vanilla, salt, cinnamon, chocolate chips, of course, and your baking soda. You start out with your mixing bowl. So you're gonna need a softened stick of butter. I just put mine in the microwave and soften it. I keep it wrapped. That way you'll have butter splatting everywhere. Drop that in your bowl. And then you need a third cup of white sugar, a third cup of brown sugar, and just get your mixer and mix that up till it's nice and smooth. You will need to scrape your edges, of course. Next, time for the room temperature egg. All you need is a bowl of warm water. Put your egg in there as you're pulling everything out. By the time you get to kneading it, it's gonna be the perfect temperature. Crack that and then you're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla and here's the magical ingredient just an eighth teaspoon of lemon juice. You can use real lemon juice, but I just use the stuff in the bottle. Go ahead and mix that up, scrape it. It's gonna get nice and fluffy. And this is the magic of the recipe. It's just this nice, soft, fluffy dough, and we're not gonna over flour it. Then you're gonna to wanna to get your dry ingredients going. What I do is get a two cup measuring cup and then add one cup and two tablespoons of flour, then a half cup of rolled oats, 
half teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Then I just use my butter knife and stir up the flour, oats, baking soda, salt, and cinnamon so it's ready to dump in the bowl as I'm mixing. Now you only want to mix for about 45 seconds. You do not want to overmix this. Then set aside the beaters and it is time to stir in your chocolate chips. Now for this recipe, you can do anywhere from one to one and a half cups, just however many chocolate chips you love. And this dough is light, sticky, and so ready for your air fryer. Go ahead and line your air fryer basket with some foil. Make sure you've created the little handles so you can easily grab that out. And you want your cookies to be about an inch and a half to two inches apart so they don't mush in together. Push your dough down just a smidge. It's going to help weigh the cookie down so the foil doesn't blow around and just help it cook nice and evenly. And then that's it. Close up the air fryer, set it to 300, and you're gonna cook it for anywhere from six to eight minutes. For your first batch, go low. Start at six, and you might see you need as many as eight minutes for your cooking. And I have found on, usually my, by my third or fourth batch, I do need to lower that to about six minutes. When they're done, go ahead and you can let them sit in the air fryer. Just go ahead and lift up the foil and set it on a cookie rack. Just be sure you give them some more time to set up before you scrape them off the foil. But if you have another sheet of foil, you can just sit there and rotate your batches nice and easy. Up next, air fryer chocolate molten lava cake. This is such a fun treat and so easy to do. Let's check it out. You need eight ounces of the baking chocolate. You'll wanna go for the bittersweet 60% cacao. Next, you'll need six eggs. We're gonna split three of those. Then a whopping 10 tablespoons of butter, one and a half cups of powdered sugar, and just a half cup of flour. Optional, some yummy berries. And then you'll need six six ounce ramekins. Now, if you don't have that size, you can totally do eight ounce ones, or you could even do some silicone muffin liners. You will just bake it for less amount of time. So we're gonna get the microwave safe bowl and open up our chocolate. Just break this up. Then dice up your butter, throw it in your bowl. So now it's time to microwave this. You can do a double broiler if you want to, if you're fancy like that. I'm not. So I'm using the microwave. We're gonna go about 90 seconds, 30 second in increments, and I'm gonna stir it up and let it melt, okay? So don't judge the fingerprints. This just means I have lots of children. And these weird things that happened in my microwave. Just a little bit melted here. Not too much stirring available to me yet. Let's give it another 30. It's been one minute. Got some action going on. Of course, all microwaves vary a bit. We'll give this one more whirl. It's looking good. I don't know that we need all of these in the shot. Alrighty, here we go. Looks like two minutes was perfect for my microwave. All right, that's nice and smooth. We're gonna throw in our powdered sugar. This is one and a half cups right there. Here's what's gonna sweeten up that chocolate. Powdered sugar is, you know, better than the regular sugar, just because this will dissolve a lot easier. And let's throw in a half cup of flour. And you'll see it's getting really thick, like a cookie dough. Not what you would expect for a lava cake, right? So now we're gonna add our eggs. So we'll do three whole eggs first. Now we need just the yolks. There's one yolk. I use these egg whites for breakfast or egg white cookies. If you've ever done those, let me know. And I'm just gonna whisk this up a little bit. I'm just gonna dump this into the batter and mix it in. Now you can see how it's just all separated. We just wanna mix it until it's nice and incorporated. So more incorporated, but still a bit lumpy. So at this point, I'm gonna try bringing my whisk back in. 
And there you can see thick and fudgy. All the lumps are just about out. And now I'm just gonna spray my little ramkins. And then you'll just fill them about three quarters full with the batter. And just divide it up. And it's time to pop those in the air fryer. Fit as many as will fit. Just make sure there's a little space between each of them. Manual setting, 400 for eight to 10 minutes. Eight if you want more of a fudgy center, a little more runny. And go 10 if you want a thicker fudgy center. Ready? And ta-da, they are done. The tops will look a little bit cakey and have some cracks. Go ahead and use some rubber tongs or hot pads to pull these out or even a clean dish towel. They're very hot. You want them to cool for about two minutes outside of the air fryer. And here's how you get them out. You might need to run a butter knife along the edges, but set the serving plate right on top of the ramekin, flip it over, and just lift that out. You'll see there's just a little bit of the cake left, but it looks fantastic. Roasted yummy s'mores coming your way without the campfire stink. Let's check it out. Marshmallows, chocolate, graham crackers. You know it, it is air fryer s'mores right here. You know the drill. Place your crackers down and grab your marshmallows. I have a trick for you that you've gotta do if you're doing these in the air fryer. You are gonna snip the bottoms of the marshmallows off just enough to make those marshmallows sticky so they stick right onto the graham cracker. Now I threw toothpicks in here because I had an experiment. I wanted to see if toothpicks would help the marshmallows stay put on the graham crackers better because in my other air fryer I usually have a little hard time. Go ahead and set the temperature for 370 and you're gonna pop these in for three minutes and here we go. Ooh la la. We didn't even need those toothpicks. Now grab your chocolate, place it on those marshmallows as much as you want and then top those up and you're gonna pop it in for one more minute just to help melt the rest of that chocolate. And these were beautiful and perfect just because Careful when you take them out. Remember the basket is still hot. And there you go. You've got s'mores without the campfire stink. My teenager loved this one and approves. And last, I have air fryer donuts for you. Now these are not air fryer donuts that people make using cans of biscuit dough. These are made from scratch and they're so easy to pull together. Plus they taste so good. I know you're gonna love it just like thousands of others have. Check it out right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our yeast ready. And what you're gonna need is some lukewarm water. Now the trick to doing this is an instant rate thermometer. So if you've got one, snag it. If you don't, I've got a link below of the one I've been using for years and it's still lasting. So I just microwave this for about a minute and it usually comes to about 110, 115 degrees. Of course, microwaves all vary, so your results could be different. If you overheat your milk, you could just let it cool down, no problem. This is when the, this thermometer comes in really handy. You could also do the test on your wrist and just make sure it's that lukewarm feeling. You always wanna make sure your yeast is bubbly before you actually use it with your mix. Okay, got the milk. I am just gonna stir it around a little bit because microwaves don't necessarily heat evenly. And then we will take the instant read, make sure it's at about 115, 110. And there we go, it's about 113. I like it. Let's move forward. So to start, we're gonna do two and a half teaspoons of yeast. Now I'm using instant yeast. I'm just using a tablespoon and going a little under, so I'm not super particular about my measurements there. Then I'm gonna whisk it up and add in a teaspoon of sugar. Now this is just a half teaspoon that I have so I'm doing it twice. Now, while your yeast is setting up, you could go ahead and crack one egg, whisk that up, and then melt four tablespoons or a half a stick of butter. Now the yeast is looking nice and bubbly, so we are good to move forward. If you don't see those bubbles after about five, 10 minutes, then you might wanna do another batch of your yeast. And then we've got a quarter cup of sugar we're gonna throw in, half teaspoon of salt, there's your whisked egg, that's one egg. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up really quick first, and then I'm gonna throw in my hot melted butter as I'm mixing. 
And then the recipe calls for three cups of flour, but we're gonna start with just the first two cups. Always remember to dump into your measuring cup and then level it off so we get just the right amount. And then go ahead and mix that up. Now on my mixer, I usually like to scrape the sides after the initial mix. And then keep going and we're gonna throw in that last cup of flour. And silly me, uh, I knew this wasn't working out quite right. It's because I wasn't using my dough hook. So get that dough hook on and then we're gonna go ahead and knead the dough for about five minutes. Now your dough should be sticky to the touch but you shouldn't have dough really left on your finger. So if you need to add maybe up to a half cup more of flour, go for it. And then once it's all mixed up, it's ready to rise. Depending on the type of yeast you have and your conditions, it could take 30, 45 minutes. But you will know when it's done when you press your finger in and the indentation stays there. So now that we are ready, I'm gonna prepare my surface. I usually spray some olive oil, sprinkle on some flour, and then let's get rolling. So you'll want to roll this about a quarter inch thick. Now you could use cookie cutters or just grab some things around the house. This is what has worked perfectly for me. You want three inches wide and then one inch for the inside of your circle for those cute donut holes. And then go ahead and cut, cut, cut. Now this first cut is when they always turn out so beautiful. So get as many as you can on there. Then go ahead and lay those out on some parchment paper so they can do a little more rising. And then blend up your extra dough. This is how I like to knead it, just pulling it inwards, stretching it through, just helping things get incorporated again, but it won't look as pretty. Now I'm gonna show you what happens if we go thicker on the dough. So these are thicker little donuts and they take a little bit longer to bake. And sometimes when I do this, they're a little more doughy inside. So I'm gonna test it out and I'll let you know at the end. So check out at the end and you can see how those fat ones look. Now at the end, I just make some donut holes. They aren't necessarily pretty. That's okay, they still taste fantastic. So go ahead and let those donuts rise for about 15 minutes. They aren't necessarily gonna double in size, but you will see a little more fluffing. Go ahead and lightly spray your air fryer basket. Gently place those donuts in the basket. I can fit five in mine. And then give those tops a light spray. And then we're gonna cook it at 350 for four minutes. Now while that's baking, you are gonna whip up some icing. So you'll start with six tablespoons of melted butter, two teaspoons of vanilla, two cups of powdered sugar, and just mix that in. It's gonna turn into a kind of a thick paste. Once you get that in, throw in about two tablespoons of hot water, get that blended and smooth, and then you'll see here it's still a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna add in about another tablespoon of hot water until I get it to the consistency that I want. So it's gonna be nice and thin, but not to the point where it's super watery. Now, if things thicken up in between batches, you can always throw it in the microwave for about 15 seconds to thin it out. First batch came out a little bit light, so I'm gonna run it for about two more minutes. Now those look nice and brown, so I'm gonna just dump them on a cookie rack. Now here's my fat ones, they're so cute. I'm gonna go ahead and cook those up, and this time I'm gonna just cook them for five minutes since my air fryer's a little bit heated up. Now that these have had a minute to cool, I'm gonna go ahead and dump them in the icing. I'm just using some tongs, lightly grabbing them. Lay them out on the cookie rack so they can finish cooling and that glaze can harden up. Oh my goodness, these look so good. Believe me, they are. And now that next batch is done. Let's take a look at those. And they look perfect. Third batch going in. This time just doing it for four minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and ice my chunky donuts. And there, last batch looking nice and brown. Now I'm gonna just do all the donut holes together. Four minutes on this go around. 
And look at those. Now, since my icing is getting low, I'm just dumping all the donut holes in there and stirring them up with a spatula. I'm gonna let those lay out to cool down. And let's go check out the results. Remember, this is the batch that was the second roll and a bit thicker. Let's see how they turned out. In the past, they've been a little doughy, but this time I cooked them a little bit longer. Let's see how they look. Uh, it's chewy, oh, yumma. It looks good. I have people wanting to taste test. Mm. So the thicker ones, I would cook as your first or second batch and not the last batch because then your air fryer will probably burn the tops and not cook the inside all the way. At least that's what I found with my air fryer. There you go. I have links to all of these recipes down below. You can read through them or print them out if you would prefer and let me know which one you like the most. I've got more air fry recipes right here, and I think you're gonna like this one as well. Let me know what you think I should try next, and I'll see you next time.